scam, like for the definition of this podcast, is kind of an idea to gain money. The problem is that's how you and I look at it as a free 30 grand. To them, they're like, it's a credit line. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> that's not the way this works. Yeah, that's <laughs> I promise you, it's free. And gave us the possibility of getting a $7 million check from Kellogg's. I remember telling them, I'm like, we're, we're done. Seven million bucks, it's over. It was never gonna be over. I used to always say, like, man, if well, I just got I mean, a few million dollars. <laughs> if I got a few million dollars, I would have said, that was easy. <laughs> The problem with most people is you read this scam and you're like, that's a good scam. Like what went wrong? Like he did it in his own name. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Well, go behind the cash register with the guy and like go into and steal like all kinds. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm here with my buddy, Zach. Yo, what's up? Check out my channel. And we're going to, yeah, Zach's got a channel, Black Zach. No, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about that. But it's, uh, it's all that needs to be said. Um, and uh, yeah, so check out that channel. And um, also, uh, the link will be in the description. So we're going to be going over, this is real, I didn't think this through. Scams we admire. Like, I'm trying to be like a clean cut guy. Well, it doesn't mean you can't admire something. No. It's like you 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 have a beautiful wife. That's true. Right? But then you might admire another woman. You might say, hey, Cindy Crawford is attractive. You know, you might see another. So you you can, you know, re rehabilitate and say, Jess used that's to, clever. Jess has killed just about every animal there is in Florida. Oh, um, nice. She's butchered them. Bare hands. She can cut them op open, cut all, take out the guts, skin them. And put like all the good stuff in a freezer, and then you know eat it. She's already told me they'll never find your body. <laughs> She's like, I mean, I get it. Like there are girls that cute, they flirt with you, they send you messages, and I get it, and that's great. She goes, but I'm just letting you know, they'll never find your body. And I, like I didn't even have to follow up on that. I don't. Know, what does that mean? What do you? I was just like. I just knew it was ominous. Just You're well, like I got it. No yeah, problem. Yeah. No problem. Listen, she's got me so scared. Like when when. Women, you will text me, you know, they'll text you, you know, they'll hit you up on Instagram or whatever, you know, hey, how's it going? Or wow, you're amazing. And I'll listen within the first sentence or two. It's like, yeah, my wife thinks so. <laughs> like, like, just in case it's a plant. Right. You know, in case she's trying to like go around like, hey, I need you to send something to Matt. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, you're not sucker not oh, oh so you're old. you're one step ahead of it oh yeah that's that that's that mentality yeah that's the mentality like for you people that with cons and schemes the the mentality of looking at it from the reverse angle that's what i that's what i always call it too that'll keep you alive yes yes or out of when, when you spin it around and you say you know what let me try to see it from the other perspective coming back towards me yeah now nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. i'm not falling for it yeah Good times. Yeah. So what? So what? What is the scam? What is a scam? Because there's no one scam. No. But is there a scam or or, or what? What scams? Sc but first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them, but they make it super hard to do it. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see. It's really easy to set up. So you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to profit off of you and your private information, or you can go to aura.com backslash Matt to start your two week free trial also linked in the description below. Yes. A, a, a scam, like for the definition of this podcast, is kind of an idea to gain money. Like I might have an idea like, hey, I'm like, I might have come across a checkbook and go, you know what? I got an idea. I'm going to write a check off of this guy's account who we don't know to you 
You're going to deposit in your account. We're going to split it. Right. And you might go, hey, I'm down with that. You know what I'm saying? That is what I, I don't I know who it would be. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be shocked. Look at you. You'd be shocked. You, you would be shocked. I know a guy. Yeah, you, you would. You would absolutely be shocked. You, you, it's it's unbelievable. But um, that that is a scam. Or I'm even. I consider a scam is like the um, what I was privy to was the shoplifters. Like I uh, I knew I knew four ladies that did shoplifting. Right, and like I was lucky enough to sit in on one of their meetings, you know, because they have one person that draws in the security. So the other three are actually going to steal and get away. And the other one's going to draw security and draw security, like act like she's not yes, steal anything. Be, be absolutely sloppy. Obvious. Obvious. Yes. So that security kind of hangs out and kind of watches her. And right. They really focus and, on sure. But. And, and, and what they do is they, they come in all separate and then they all watch her to see if she, Oh yeah, she's being watched. Let's go. You know, don't, that is a scam, you know, because a they're well work- choreographed. Yes. Chore- yes. Well, something that's pre, I was, I was pre-planned, but I really, I want to use the legal term premeditated. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's when you know you've turned, turned a corner. Yes. When you start using, yeah, that's the, right. When you start, start using the legal term. Or yes. The, the law enforcement term. So yeah. pre, so premeditated. So if, if I told you, Hey, I'm going to write you a check. This is premeditated. Whereas I could have just wrote you a check and said, hey, I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. I need you to cash it. I, I could lie. Right. But to, to put everyone in on it is is the scam. You know, me, like we're all working together to obtain money. That is what we call a scam. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're, because what, what happened scheme. was. Scheme. Scheme really isn't illegal, by the way. The term scheme. Yes. That's that's what I was thinking. Scheme is 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 to me sounds sing, illegal. Well, right. Scheme seems singular. Like if you okay. use the word scheme, it seems like it would only be one person. Really? Yeah. A, a, a scheme seems like so. Then in my mind, a scheme would have a a uh, mastermind. You know, which means like that one person is the ultimate benefactor. And all, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in jail thinking about <laughs> the differences. So I, does it I, reflect? I, I, think, what, I think whatever, they're, 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 they're synonyms. Anyway, whatever, <laughs> roughly. So yeah, so so, yeah you okay. like one person benefiting. So you got the little benefactors out say, there. So, uh, so, so that a scam, I don't say, so a scam is a group effort. Like, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> okay, so what, what, what happened? I disagree, but what happened? What, what? I don't understand. So you—that's the scam you admire, the one where they're shoplifting, or just you admire the fact that they drew law yeah. enforcement away? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because of the brilliance of it, well, like it, you, like you would say that only because it, I'm given the simplicity of it, right? But it, to watch that in action, because it works. So the the. The one person that's the um, the draw, the person that draws the attention, actually gets stopped at the register. Right, and, right? and, 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 and what's and, so and, funny and, is that they're not in any jeopardy at all. No, and and the other people leave with pre like they have orders of stuff going in. It's it's unbelievable. They have orders of stuff going in, and the one girl stopped at the register. Oh, and she gives them a sob story and cry, cries, and then twenty minutes, you know, they're texting on the phone, and it's like they're gonna let me go, and then they end up letting them go with, hey, don't ever come back in the store. Woman. Right. But the whole time, it's like, okay, we got like six thousand dollars worth of stuff. You're saying she really does steal stuff, and they get no, caught, she, or she she gets stopped at the register. She makes it look like right. I was she, gonna say, like clumsy. to me, to me, like in front of them, you could, I like with the camera, I would kind of show myself like putting stuff in a bag, and then move to a spot, and then take the stuff out of the bag. Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like to me, you get up to the cash register and then they'd come and they'd grab you like, oh no oh, em- empty your bag and you'd empty the bag you'd be like what they'd be like holy jesus like i, I saw her i like i could <laughs> that see that would be a dr- right that and then they'd have to let you go it's like what are you talking oh yeah yeah no i did put a skirt i did put the skirt in there and then i realized oh wait a second this looks bad i got i need to i took it out and then i thought well i don't even want this so i just left it on the counter it's over there you know so but i was gonna say what that reminds me of is the um you know the Romanian Wall. You, it was called the Romanian Wall, where they had there was people from Romania, or the Gypsy Wall. They called it too. So people would go into like, and they they had video of Seven Elevens and stuff, where people would there would be like six or eight people would come in, 
and in a, in a group and one per, and so the person at the counter let's say 711 would look and see this group move you know coming in and they create almost like a wall they're just kind of bundled together and somebody else would walk in crouch down and walk in behind them so the camera you know, sees them, but the other camera sees the person, but this is just, this guy's not watching the camera. He's watching these people. Right. So they come in and then they kind of move through the store. They have kind of a direction where they're kind of walking and moving. And the one guy, somebody says, Hey, something to the, to the cashier. And he looks over here and the person who's bent down, who he doesn't even know is in the store kind of like moves towards the cash register. He's right there. And so as these guys are talking, he's moving around the cash register and literally they had vi- have videos of this of these guys where the guy will be he'll go behind the cash register with the guy and like go into and steal like all kinds of stuff that's back there that's hidden while these guys are loud and they they're playing music and they're talking and banging stuff and doing this and he's kind of just watching and watching steal stuff go back then they pull the wall back together and the guy walks out with them and all they've bought is like a stick of gum and he walks out with you know whatever hundreds of dollars of cartons of cigarettes or there have been times where they've gone into the safe there have been times where they said like they took a gun they got How a the gun heck? How that that that, that then, even? But well, then later they'd look at the camera and they'd be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and if you watch it, you're like, "This is insane." Watching that in play, the the know that that's choreographed because like you have to wonder, do they practice that? They have to practice, right? Like it's it's if you watch the the videos on YouTube and stuff, you, you're just going, "This is nuts." You're almost like, "How could he not?" And you're like, "Okay, I get it," but from his perspective. He's not seeing it. He's only seeing these groups of people. And then once the guy gets under the counter, he's done. he's done. He would have to turn around and start looking at the videos that are shooting from the other way. And who's doing that? He's trying to see if these guys are stealing. And they are. They're not. They're stealing. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're, they're, for, they're the distraction. Yeah. Un- unbelievable. That reminds me. That's that's So that's what I'm saying. It's the same kind of thing. Right. You're just drawing their attention. Um, to a way. And that's, that's, a, that's a scam. Yeah. Do you remember... I shouldn't even say this. <laughs> Do you remember when we were talking about? Um, uh, I'm thinking Barrington, but go ahead. No, no. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking when we were um, the the when we were in locked up, and we were talk about the uh, identity theft scam, where it was like, what if someone stole somebody's identity? Like, I steal your identity, right? Um, which given that you're a man of color would be difficult, but let's assume I steal your identity. I get a driver's license in your name. I run up all your credit cards. I then borrow money on against your house, the whole thing. But I happen to have a uh, life lock. Do you remember this? Yes. <laughs> so this was what we were, what we used to joke about. And it was, it was, and then when suddenly you start getting the, the credit cards, the whole thing, like I would do that because I'm not worried about him. You know, the big, worst problem would be that the person you're stole their identity finds out and calls the police, but I know he's not going to call. What's going to happen is once the first credit cards start showing up, you then call the police. Hey, look, I got an issue, man. I got like a $40,000 credit card bill. Right. Someone took my credit card. You call your you call your credit card company. You do this, and then more bills start showing up. You start going, oh whoa, well I need somebody to come out here. Like I got like a hundred thousand dollars in credit card right, debt. Right. Somebody stole my credit cards. No, I don't know. I have them on me. I don't. I or maybe I lost my wallet, but I didn't give anybody my pin numbers. Like this is ridiculous. Right. And it, so you do all that. You run it all up. Then you find out maybe there's a mortgage on their house, or somebody took out a. Fifty thousand dollar personal loan in your name. You're like, right, oh my god. Right. So we were talking about like you run it up to like a couple, two, three hundred thousand dollars. Like it's insane. You're calling the police. But the interesting thing about that was that what what we were saying. Well, what you were saying really was you were like, but I know what's going on because I can call the police and say, well, do you have any leads? Well, what's happening? Right. Well, what happened with? And the police would be like, look, we're we're doing it. We found this. We found this. There was a PO box that was opened. Right. Well, well, who opened the PO box? Well, we. we we can't find the person that opened the PO. So you're going through the whole thing, or it was an abandoned house. It's actually in your neighborhood. What? You know, but you would know because at some point they would be they would say, look, you know, we're we're just out of options. We don't know what to do. And you're also involved because the credit card people are contacting you. Right. So at some point, even if there was a prosecution, 
the worst that could happen is you were saying you would you could you could say, look, I'm not going to participate in that prosecution. I got my money back. The credit card companies paid the money back, and and they we got the thing with the mortgage taken care of, and and I I I don't want any trouble with who I don't know who you arrested, but I don't want any trouble with that person. Right. And then being the person, if they did end up getting arrested, I could then say, man, I'm going to trial. And they <laughs> like, don't have the victim. They'd be like, Jesus, no, knowing when the prosecutor comes in and says, oh, listen, this guy's going to show up. He's going to testify. He'd be like, <laughs> is he? I can't wait to see him. <laughs> We had this whole thing laid out, right? And, right. and oh, the other one was the the um, the identity theft, the LifeLock was that you could also claim against LifeLock right. to say you could sue for allowing all that to happen, right? Because but when we were locked up, you and I thought, and I, I know differently now, but we thought. Remember, they say up to a million dollars. It was a million dollars in legal fees that they would pay to fix it. We were thinking that that was like insurance that they would, right? Like they would pay off your credit cards, or they would, but they won't. It's just, it's just um, they would just call and file the claims for you, which would still be good because because <laughs> right. you could still say they could do all that for you. You have to do nothing. Is that what they? Is that all LifeLock does? Is just file the claims? LifeLock and um, Home Title Lock, they will hire an attorney that will file all the paperwork to reinstate your credit cards, get the balances dropped to, uh, I mean, now Home Title Lock only does it for mortgages. Right. LifeLock only does it for identity theft. Okay. So if you had both of them. Which you probably have to have. Yeah. But you could really insure yourself completely against the whole thing. Yep. <laughs> um, but what we were, when we were locked up, we were thinking. They would you, pay they you. They would pay you, but they right. won't pay you. No. 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 And, and you know, it's in it, the thing is, too, it's like it's a service. It's not insurance because they just don't insure you. Right. So, but they will pay for the, the fees, which honestly is the biggest <laughs> hurdle. If something <laughs> happens, like. Right. You're trying to like you got like a 40, 50 hour a week job and you're driving back and forth. Like when do you have time to write all those letters and try and fix all this? You know, if you're a real victim, if you really are a victim, like that's the problem. Like you got to write letters, you got to send emails, you have to make phone calls. Like, man, I'm working till five or six o'clock. I don't even get home till 630. Right. Then my kids are screaming. I got to make dinner. I got, you know, like when do you call anybody? You got to start taking days off work to try and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, Count me out. <laughs> so a, a couple of the schemes that I admired, you know, I, I think we talked about one of them, which was the um, with the had to do with the Kellogg's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I admired, you know, what's so funny about that scheme is that came to me at, at a phone call. My, my wife and I are sitting at the at the house and I don't know what we were watching, but somebody called and go, hey. They call up and they go, they go, hey, they got you on television. I go, what channel? NBC. I go, me? They go, no, they got the kind of crap that you do. Oh. So then I turn it over to NBC and it, it was, a, it was a, I think it was American Greed. But what was happening, it was showing a guy that was cashing like $100,000 checks. How's that even possible? That's what I was, I'm like, oh my God. So what was happening was there was a oil um, rig Somebody worked for an oil company in Houston and this woman was seeing the checks come in to pay the oil company. And what the guy had done was he opened up a similar company with the oil, with, with the, the name of the company. Like right. he went to another state and opened up a company that had a similar name as the company that was receiving the checks. So if we were paying an oil company, if, if we were Matt and Zach's um, gas station, we might write an oil company a check for like three hundred thousand dollars right. for a sh shipment of oil. Well, the woman that worked in the office was giving that to her friend, and he was depositing it into an account he started that had a very similar name as the oil company. This is right. what they're putting out on American Greed. Yeah. So, like, um, my wife and I were sitting there watching this, right, and we looked at each other, like, nice. Why didn't we think of doing? Oh. Because. <laughs> Here's what's funny. Here's what we were doing at the time. I'm sorry. That's so wrong. It is. It's a horrible, <laughs> horrible crime. Honey, <laughs> can you believe that? 
No, it was one of those moments where we're sitting. The reason why that happened is because what we were doing at the time is we were I, we were making checks. So we would go to mailboxes, business mailboxes, and steal the mail at night. We just looked for checks. And what we do is we'd find a check, and then I would make a check payable to someone off of that. I was just looking for a fresh account. Yeah. So we were finding all these business checks. In fact, one time, remember, we found a $100,000 check. Right. I'm like, geez, man, I wish we could cash that somehow. You know? And that's, that's what was happening. We'd see all these checks, and we'd just make a duplicate check for like four or $5,000 and deposit it in an, in an account with somebody and just get the money out and run. That was our whole deal. So when we're watching television and they go, hey, he was actually cashing the checks that he was getting for their full amount. And you just look at each other like, can you imagine if we had known this with the hundred thousand dollar check? Like, chase. What's I was gonna say? What's funny is people don't realize like you can open a corporation, and then you can open up a, a DBA or a corporation. You, a corporation similar. You could say like you know like let's say there's you know this drink what Ghost Energy drink. Then you could open up a corp- corporation that says you know that that's Ghost you know distributor. Yeah, Ghost distributor, Ghost Productions, Ghost Energy, Ghost Energy you know drink. Two, yes, you know, whatever. Like it's, it's like you know, you know, of Tampa Bay, you know, of Florida, or whatever. You just add anything onto it that changes it subtly, and then the next thing you know, you know, you can go open up a bank account in that name and deposit checks, you with know, that name with or any der- any any variation of that name because the banks just don't check. They uh, you who, know who it's going to, the address. They don't even match the state. They just look at the name and and process. It. Yeah, I used to have a company, you know, Consortium Financial Services. They would write Consortium Mortgage. This is people paying me. Yes. They'd send me, oh, Consortium Mortgage, Consortium Bank, Consortium whatever, you know, home loans. It's like it's Consortium Financial Services. Right. Sometimes it would just be Consortium. Right. You know, just deposit them, deposit them. Deposit. Nobody, the bank never said, oh, wait a second. This is an issue. Yeah. No. And, and, and so it was – so we obviously we did that. Picked up checks. We probably did over a hundred thousand dollars in checks when somebody called us and said they had a friend that worked in Kellogg's. That's like that was a story that I shared. Yeah, yeah. And that's how that whole scheme developed. Yeah, we did that whole. We did a whole. That video made got a lot of views. (laughs) That's the Kellogg video. The Kellogg. Yes. So when when we called the girl, like you could imagine, like we were dancing because when we called the girl, (laughs) I asked her. She goes, "Oh well, I work up in the office and I, I see the checks." I said, okay, well, how much is a check? She goes, probably the smallest check is probably like two and a half million. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Man. like, I go, it's over. We're the, done. Our fraud and days seven, are over. <laughs> the seven million dollar Kellogg scam. Yeah. <laughs> Selling, no, stealing seven million from Kellogg's. Yes. That just sounds horrible. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that got like 70,000 views. Wow. That's not bad for my channel. And that was like a year ago. That was a we a year ago. It must have been just just before. Yes, right. The right. incident. Yes, <laughs> the horrible incident. So yeah, that that's what led to that discovery because we had we started of all the crap we were doing, we added that to our repertoire and just started making money. And that's when the girl from Kellogg's came into our life and gave us the possibility of getting a seven million dollar check from Kellogg's I remember telling I'm like we're, we're done seven million bucks it's over we you, give the girl a million yeah you know <laughs> yeah you're not doing it yeah but you know what's so, what's so funny is like my mindset back then like it was never gonna be over I used to always say like man if I just got a few million dollars <laughs> if I got a few million dollars I would have said that was easy <laughs> You think it had never, well, well, yeah, you're right. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was the whole, just like that stupid thing I was just making. It, it's that quote. It, it's the, there's, there's nothing, there's just no feeling in the world like walking in a bank, handing them a fake ID and some fake documents, and then having them hand you a check for $250,000 and thank you for ripping them off. Like, I mean, that's just insane. Yes. And that yes. feeling you're like. Like this is insane, right? Like I'm gonna walk and walk in there, th- and then or even thank you and telling you what a great customer you've been. Like <laughs> I, I I borrowed like a couple hundred thousand dollars one time, 
and I was hate. I always say this because I had a guy who like read my book who came back and was like, "You said you borrowed a couple hundred thousand dollars in the book. It says you borrowed one hundred twenty thousand. It was just like man, stuff, whatever. I don't remember what it was. Okay, one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, whatever it was. I had borrowed it in the name of this a fake per. It was it was a real person. It was a homeless guy. So I I borrowed that money and then and he had perfect credit. Right. So. Got a check for whatever, let's say one hundred fifty thousand. Went and deposited it in my bank, and immediately, as soon as I did it, the the person goes, "Okay, thank you." And they went, "Oh, you've been approved for a thirty thousand dollars credit card." And I went, "You mean pre-approved?" She goes, "No, you've been approved." And of course, I of course I've been approved. I just deposited a check for one hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash. <laughs> I mean, one hundred fifty thousand dollars into my account, right. and I do have perfect credit. You know, that guy had perfect credit, and he and she said, uh, "All you have to do is." is uh, tell me you want the card and we'll have it overnighted to you. And I went, yes, I do. <laughs> a free 30 grand yes, for I, ripping you yeah, off? Yeah. Absolutely, hand see, that over. See, the problem is that's how you and I look at it as a free 30 grand. To them, they're like, it's a credit line. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> that's not the way this works. Yeah, that's <laughs> I promise you, it's free. <laughs> there, there's no payments getting made. Now, I promise you it's free, yeah. but I won't be no. once they catch up with me. No. So right now, though, <laughs> I'm walking up out of this mug. I got a sports car. <laughs> I got a hot girlfriend. Yes, I was double, amen. Happy. Amen. Yes. Going on some vacations. <laughs> yeah. Right up till they put them cuffs on me. And I was That's like, right. Oh. Then it's unfree. It's like, but, <laughs> but I'm going to Australia. <laughs> You're, listen, if I was a cop, you know how much fun I would have. I'd be like, when with, <laughs> with a couple of guys that are just like, you know, what, with what they're saying, you know, what like, like, no, no, I, 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 but I, I can't. You can't arrest me. I <laughs> stop it, bro. We got you on video. Two of your code of fitness oh, no. rolled on you. You know, you know damn well you'd play along. You're like, oh, oh, you were going to Australia. Oh, hold on. on, let me get the hey, keys to the cuffs. Yeah. <laughs> You, there's no way you'd be like, come on, bro. We got you on film. It's kind of like my arrest with the, oh, what is your yeah. name? Uh, Albert Henley. <laughs> Albert Henley, you have ID? Of course I have ID. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, all right. Anyway. <laughs> then, then there goes another charge. <laughs> now we got aggravated he identity just, yeah, theft. He just looked at it like. You're good. Yeah, like, wow. <laughs> Here you go. Come on, let's go. <laughs> come on, Albert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Albert, let's go. Yeah. You're going to jail. <laughs> We're not going to arrest Isaac anymore. We're arresting yeah. Albert, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. Good times. The, 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 getting arrested is not good times. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe so. <laughs> Get out of here. It's fun looking back on it. At the time, it's not, it's not fun. Oh, no. It's like the, everything spins. In your oh, head. Yeah. That and the time when you get your time in court. Oh, it, it's like, immediately. I oh, you just got a job at McDonald's. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I just, just I shouldn't have done none of that stuff. Yeah. Immediately yeah. regret every single thing. And then, you know, but then you get out and six months go by and you're like, listen, <laughs> I just heard. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you you have been sending you money in jail for the past two years. Yeah, but doesn't mean <laughs> I'm not. I've perfected it. I've thought it over. Yeah, I've got it perfected. I'm going to do it right this time. In, in, yeah, insanity, insanity, insanity. Thought. All right. So another another hustle that uh, I liked. <laughs> we get back on topic. I yeah, hope you don't sorry. mind. But all right, another one I like was a guy that was selling um, clean air credits. Oh yeah, remember me telling you about that? Yeah. 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 So apparently there is, um, pra- passed by George Bush, clean air credits for all the companies that spit pollution into the atmosphere. What they do is they make them invest in companies that actually take pollution out of the atmosphere. It's just the right thing to do. Yeah. And 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 so they, they created a, I didn't even know this existed until I watched. Apparently it doesn't exist. Oh, it still does. Bro. No, I'm saying based on what your guy was doing. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah that's what right. they're probably all doing. Take the you're taking all that carbon and all this stuff out of the air. Come on, stop it, bro. Like, well, no, no, we're planting trees. Come yeah, on. The planting, planting tree, and for for poop, people who process or help de- disintegrate uh, manure and stuff like that into fertilizer that actually cleans the air. Believe it or not, but. I'm going to tell you, like, the Clean the Ocean. What's the name of that company 
that sends out those bags for we take gunk out of the ocean. Have you seen that? Those commercials for them? No. I don't so, watch a lot of TV though. Oh, there's there's a comp, there's a one big company out there that cleans the ocean that they claim to clean cleans the ocean and they go, "Oh, we are we're sponsored by so many, you know, people helping us out, helping us clean. We take donations. The, most of their money, I heard this on NPR, a majority of their money comes from the clean air credits. All companies that pollute the ocean pay them big time for going out there and taking gunk out of the ocean. Mm. So with those, so those things are still around. What I what it was I didn't know is that there was a marketplace for the balance. So if if corporations that dirty up the air obviously have much much more money, right? Than corporations that actually clean the air. So the corporations that clean the air actually sell clean air credits to those companies and they have a certain amount that they, they, they need to have. They actually fight and bid. It's a bidding war. It's like uh, eBay for right. the clean air because sometimes it goes up depending on the demand. So obviously the schemer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just pictured. <laughs> I just pictured Christie's. <laughs> I just pictured a bunch of corporate <laughs> Fat cats on a stage. You should have seen the episode, bro. Be, behind the 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 uh, auctioneer <laughs> at Christie's, and in the in the crowd, it's nothing but hippies. <laughs> They're all like, <laughs> "You <laughs> bastards!" Three hundred thousand. I'll go three hundred. I'll go two eighty. I'll go two sixty. You know, and they're they're you shut up, Jennifer. Hey. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got their group combing their hair yes. and they're wearing flower. And, yeah, you're, you know, uh, make so, it beautiful, baby. Yeah, there's a band. You know, the the monkeys are playing in the background. <laughs> that, you know, you remember the monkeys? Yes, I love the monkeys. But anyway, yes. Oh. So this this schemer obviously got approved by the EPA. Nice. But what he did was he rented a a, a, a place. Rented the equipment. I, I can't even remember how he f- fraudulently told them he was cleaning the air. They came over. The EPA gave him the seal of approval. Okay. Once he got that approval, he went on the clean he air. shut everything down. Yeah. He, well, he leased the machine. <laughs> Listen, when they came and checked him out, mm-hmm. he, he, because he, they would so announce, they, right. we're coming in two weeks. Oh, you are? Yeah, I need to lease another couple of machines. Yeah. And stick bring them, them back. The, yeah. Stick them in the warehouse. Yeah. Turn around back. Get <laughs> some hippies out here and some tree huggers to D- dude, look like we're doing a, like we're do-gooders. American Greed was cursing them up and down. Round up 50 do-gooders. <laughs> yeah, stick them in there. We're picking up trash on the side of the road, you bastards. <laughs> but <laughs> Exactly. A- American Greed was criticizing the EPA for approving him three three times he was checked out, all three times he passed. Like, yeah, he's doing it. Selling clean air credits. I told you what caught him was he had this penchant for expensive cars. He bought like $3 million worth of expensive. He had like a Lamborghini, uh, not a Jaguar, but a um, what's the other cat car? Um, cat car? I want to say it's, it's another car that's like 100000 Not a Lamborghini, but... It's another hundred thousand dollar car. I can't remember. Hundred thousand Lamborghinis are like three, four hundred thousand. Oh, they are? oh yeah, For, for Ferrari. What? What? May a Ferrari, but he he Maserati. Maserati. Like that was the other one. That was the other one. He had he had about over like four million dollars, three million dollars worth of cars parked out by his house. Which it, it would be like someone pull in and you have three million dollars in cars. Like in, in, he was in a regular neighborhood like yours, and you just come up and you go like, dude. What the hell is with all these expensive cars? Hey, I'm just living like that. Yeah, I'm just. Um, so they call the police. Just, just, that's how just, he got I'm caught. I'm just doing the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's trying how to he, clean up the planet. That's how he got caught. The police come and he's got all the paperwork for the cars. And they're kind of like, okay. And he hands it over to, uh, I guess, a, uh, a detective or a fraud investigator who kind of runs the guy and he checks him out. Like the EPA calls and makes an appointment. Right. He checked them out without an appointment. Like, um, I don't know how you're selling all those clean air credits sitting in this empty warehouse, <laughs> but I'm finna tell somebody. <laughs> so okay, so no, so he told the EPA and. Well, yeah, I think they yeah, and then they brought him up on. He only 
Like when it all came in down to it, I think he got like three years in prison. But he stole like about eight million, eight or nine million dollars. I'll do three years for eight million. <laughs> That's what we ought to have. Because a they bit. didn't, they didn't even imagine? know. They didn't even understand the charge. It was it was crazy. It Could, was like a, a unique. They had to charge him uniquely because there was really no crime of of what he was doing, like false statement type of charge, like the one thousand and one, like the the beginning. All the charges making a false, giving false information. That was a charge, and that only carries three years. So I guess they he got nothing. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was thinking. Um, I was just thinking. <laughs> I was thinking during the Civil War, you know, they were conscripting people, right? So either you had to show up, or one of your ever your family, right? right? Or you could say, "Hey, I can't do it. I want it. You know, fellas, I want to. I'm with you. But I'm, I want to be at the can't be with can't be with you. I got to do the farm. I got to do the whole thing. But I've got my slave, John." He can go for me. And they would say, okay, well, put your mark here, John. And John would put his mark. And he'd be in the in the army. I thought, what if you were super rich and you're going to jail and you were able to say, listen, I know I got four years or I know I got three years. I can't go, but Matt will do my time for me. And then I have to compensate Matt to do my time. Like, bro. You know, I, <laughs> I would, I would I, I'm ready I'd to sat, sign up. Like I'll do go do what kind of first in the custody level. Like, oh no, you're going, you're going to a pen. Oh, Matt, how much for the pen? Listen, pen's 150,000 a year, 200,000 a year. And I'll do for that. you. I'll do four years, do four years for you. But you got to, you know, but it's going to be a million dollars up front in my lawyers. You know, you, could you imagine if you could negotiate that? And in a way you're, I think I know what you're going to say, you know, in a way people do, you can I'll tell you an incident where I, that I know about, but go ahead. Oh, that, I was saying, I was going to say, I sat in county jail one time wondering if it was possible to get someone else to do my sentence. Like, I, I've, like you were ex- describing about the you being me. Yeah. Like, like, I told myself, how much would it disturb the system if I allowed someone to become me and they just go turn, hey, I'm Isaac Allen. Well, no, and no, they I, don't, I in. mean, like, 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 if there was actually a system. Oh, like you a, mean like a le- legal system? Legal I'm capitalized, thinking, uh, legal capitalized. Look, you, you, you got to do this much time. You have to give us this much time and say, listen, I, I'm not going to, but I've, I've paid this service, and they're going to provide someone that will do that time for me. And they go, okay, do you have the paperwork? Do you have an SS12 form? Yes. Do you have a 722 form? Yes. Did he sign? Do I, I need your driver's license? Oh, I got my driver's license. Like, okay, boom, and he goes in for you. Like, makes th- me think of Palmer. Right? He'd be. Right. I Though there are people you. that will do that, but yeah. they, they would do that. And here's here's an example of that, a real world example. We used to call this guy the. Um, uh, they used to call. They were calling him the uh, Mexican Tony Soprano. There was a cartel member in Atlanta that had gotten like fifteen or twenty years. Right. Like he's got like seven lawyers, and this was in Atlanta in uh, Atlanta City Detention Center, right? ACDC, where. You could you would meet with your lawyer in in the unit. They would walk in into a room and it was like a glass room, like there's a glass wall, and well, you know, a glass, you know, it's it's the metal piping with the thing. You'd walk in there with your lawyer or whoever, and you'd they'd close the door and you'd sit there and have a conversation. Um he crews, like five, six lawyers showed up every time you see this guy. He had tons of money. His celly just to let you, I'm just saying this is the kind of guy he was, you know, his celly was a black guy that was complaining because his baby's mama's car had broke down and it just blew like the engine blew. Right. And he went, he goes, yeah. He said, give me your address. I'll get her another car. Have somebody drop a car off. And he goes, no, man, you don't understand. He's like, no, I understand. She needs a car. And he's like, are you serious? And he said, yeah, man. Yeah. This is a guy that every time commissary came, like his bag was full and three other guys' bags were full that he was met buying. People like that. Right. So, meaning he's putting money on other people's um, commissary accounts to buy him stuff and he they get 20%. Right. So, he uh, what he did was, oh, by the way, that guy, like he, when that whole thing happened, I remember like three days later, um, he, he got off the phone with his girlfriend and said, you're not going to believe this. We were sitting there. I remember playing 
chest. Oh, this or something. is a true story. Oh, it's true. I was in that, it, like, the black guy came up and he, and he was looking for his celly, right? His celly was, I forget, he had been moved for medical. He was coming back. He's like, bro, remember he said he was going to get a car? He said, Mike, I got a phone two hours ago. Some guy showed up with like a, it wasn't a brand new car. It was like a five year old, like, you know, Acura. He's like, I mean, thing's got like 30,000 miles on it. <laughs> he was like, he just gave it to me. He signed over the title and everything. We were like, damn, like Tony did that. He was like, yeah. You know, he had a name that was, you know. Was, Definitely scream maf- mafia. Yeah, no, I mean, they called him Tony. He was the Tony Soprano oh. of, but no, he had a Mexican, a Spanish name that was difficult. You know, it wasn't something like Jesus. It was, it was a hard one. <laughs> um, so, and anyway, so what happened was, I remember too, watching my Dateline episode with him. We were all sitting there watching the Dateline episode on me. And I was sitting there just shaking my hand. I kept looking over at him. He goes, you're a bad boy. You, <laughs> you. you know? That's what he's saying. You're he a bad laugh. boy. <laughs> so here's what he had done. He had paid a peasant, right, in Mexico to come over through the border and told law enforcement who was there and how much uh, – and that he was coming and he had this much dope or whatever in the car, gave him the – the type of car, the tag, everything. They saw him. They grabbed him. Boom. 5K1. Then he said, so the second, that was one he was doing. So now he doesn't, he, now he's already down to like 15 years or something. He was supposed to get like 25. He's down to 15. He had already arranged it. And he'd been in the jail doing this. He had arranged to have a guy fly over and land at an airport, like a makeshift, air, you know, makeshift airport in Texas <laughs> And the DEA was going to grab him. And he was going to have X amount of pounds of pot. And that guy was going to, and I was like, how much time is it? He's like, oh no, the one guy, he gets five, he got five years. We make sure he, you know, my lawyer in Mexico makes sure that he has the, just enough to only get five years. And right. I take care of his family. The next guy was going to do 10. Like guys are lining up to come to do his time for him. So he could get his sentence reduced. Wow. Yeah, I, I I was just like, you know, that was, listen, Atlanta was, <laughs> right. But I mean, that's the kind of money he had. There was a guy in Coleman that got, this is a guy who we're, we're talking about. He's like one step, maybe maybe one step behind, below um, El Chapo when he was running things, right? Is actually the person who was running the Cintelo Cartel was El Chapo and El Mayo. Right. Everybody always says El Chapo or El Chapo, but El Mayo's low profile. He's really the guy that started the whole thing and brought in El Chapo. The point is, is that like one guy, there's one guy beneath him and the guy beneath him, that was the guy I was locked up in Coleman with. This is an AC. This is another, another guy. That guy had, remember the old photo books you could buy? Yeah. The, the old the, ones. The, yeah. That you couldn't sell. I don't know about where you were, but in Coleman, you they stopped selling the big ones. They yes. were too big. I know which one you're talking about. But he had, you mean the little one or the big no, one? No, the big one. It was one. a yeah. big one. I know you could only about. buy the little ones when yeah. I was there. But there were guys that still had the, the big ones. Huge ones. Right. The, yeah, exactly. Like they were like three pictures across and three pictures down. Back when there were these things called photos that you could actually print out and they were actually photos. Of. <laughs> and he had books full of them. He'd done like three or four years and he still had a few more years to go. And this is the kind of guy that got caught on a conspiracy and got like a life sentence, but had worked it all the way down by giving up low level guys that knew what, what that was going up. to happen. Like he sets them up, like they're being set up on purpose and they're saying, okay, so you're going to load 300 pounds in the, in the trunk and I'm going to drive through here and they're going to they're going to arrest me? Yes. And then it'll take a couple months for you to get sentenced, two, 6 months for you to get sentenced, and then you'll get 5 years, and then we've already got your lawyer that'll show up, make sure you're going to get 5 years. You're only got the you only got the maximum amount to get 5. You can't get more than 5 years. And you don't have any priors. No priors. You're going, you know, so anyway, this guy had done the same type of thing, and he was going to a he was at a low already, and he was going to a camp. He had photos of him in Mexico where he had to do like so many years ago, he had done like two or three years in Mexico. It was insane. The photos he had, they were allowing him 10 days a month. You can have your family come and stay Stay with you in the the prison. They had a a special spot 
America uh, was, it, yeah, it, it was it was insane. Oh, uh, plus, you understand that so many days a month you could have other people come in. Like he literally had prostitutes, prostitutes come yes. in, and they're staying the night. Yes. Like they're walking them to the cell, staying the night. He's drinking, he's drinking cores, and 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 he's got. America has the. If you talk to anyone that's been abroad, America has the most harshest penal system yeah. ever of of all of the world. Um, yeah, it, maybe Russia. You, Russia might be. Nah, rough. no, because I met I met somebody in jail in Russia. Well, I've met some guys that. Yeah, trust me. There's there's not in the world, but there, there's three or four. There's probably let's say there's five five or six other countries that are really rough, but rough meaning. So the conditions are the Mexico in, conditions are horrible. Right. It's like a city. I understand they're horrible, but in some ways they're horrible. But if you but have freedom, money, yeah, the freedom is. But in some so in some ways it's like, what are you talking about? You're letting people bring them food, and yeah, they're allowed to bring so much food. They're allowed to bring so much. They're allowed to come see them and stay in the cell with them for three days straight. Yep. They're allowed. It was like that's insane. And then of course, but if you're poor and you go to Mexico. It's horrendous, and you're 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 sleeping in the hallways. You're so it, it depends on what I guess what what type of a criminal you are, and what right. your what your ability um, you know to uh, produce you know or have money is. Um, so, but I was gonna say when we back to the scam. Sorry. <laughs> well, I was I only had two. I didn't know if you. Oh, listen, the scams that I I admire are like, you know, I I do admire. This is horrible. If you remove the victims, <laughs> you know, I do admire like like Ponzi schemes, guys that do Ponzi schemes, which is really it's just they're just blatant liars, you know. But the if you were to set up a Ponzi scheme, that here's what bothers me about Ponzi schemes, is that most Ponzi schemes, and I don't mean most, I mean like ninety nine percent of them, right. weren't set up as a scam. Like they were set up as a legitimate business that yes. very quickly goes bad. Yes. Sometimes they go do great for six years, 10 years. Sometimes guys set them up and a year and a half later, they're like, wow, man, like I'm not good at this. And, <laughs> you know, where they set it up as a legitimate, let's say, I'm going to invest, you know, of course the investors always get in trouble. Like it's, it's a hedge fund. Right. They make a couple of bad, they have a bad quarter, then they lie about it. They oh I'll make it up next quarter. Then they have another bad quarter. Right. They lie about it. They have another bad quarter. They lie about it. Then maybe they have a good quarter, but it's nowhere near good enough to recoup the losses they've had. Then they have another bad quarter, and they're just continuing to tell everybody they're doing well, and they just keep borrowing and borrowing. And before you know it, it's like so, you know, how off are you? Well, um, you know, I've lost five million dollars. You know, I am supposed to have. 50 million in, you know, the coffers and, you know, and I don't, you know, I'm paying out this much money because I've lost this much money, but I told people that I made $11 million. So, right. wow. So you're off by, by $15 million. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, and then it just keeps, it spirals out of control and then they just try and maintain it as long as possible. <laughs> so, you know, if you remove the fact that the people that they're typically taking the money from are just regular people, you know, the ability to do that and set it up and maintain it for a long period of time is is, is amazing to me. You know, that's that to me is is. Well, what scheme are you thinking about? Because you know, like Madoff comes to mind. Madoff does. What bothers me about Madoff is, you know, like he did it in his name. Like he was just he's just an idiot. Like, well, he didn't. Like you said, he didn't start off. Right. To take money, you know, um, like uh, give an example, um, the like a couple of the, the Ponzi schemes where the guys, the I can show you how to do mortgages, you know, like, you know, what I'm talking about all those people that go take buy my system. Oh, and I'll yeah. tell you how to um, buy houses. I'll help you buy houses. Or yeah, I'll put yeah. the down. But you Grant find Cardone. the house. Yeah, Grant Cardone's type. Yes, of, him. Yeah. You know, those those type of Ponzi schemes. Now, those were Ponzi schemes because well, Grant Cardone's not a Ponzi scheme. Like, like when you, I thought you were talking about two different things. Like, he's not running a Ponzi. Well, he may be. I don't know. Well, well, there's one that was a Ponzi, Ponzi scheme. I've seen those people get arrested. All of them. Like, and I, I never really understood what they did wrong, but they said it was a Ponzi scheme. 
And I, I you get, know, a lot of times they typically, here's the thing I've noticed too. Like I've talked to a lot of guys, this guy, Red Bull, they said he ran a Ponzi scheme. It was a business opportunity scheme, but they're actually, they would like, it's like people know what a Ponzi scheme is. So a lot of times the newspapers simplify it. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Um. So yeah, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. You know, you know, really there's so many schemes that I'm just, it's, I'm not impressed by as much as I'm just disappointed by. It's like you had something that was legitimate and you ruined it because you didn't do this one thing, you know, or right. um, I, I I always thought that it really, this was like a legit, that guy said it was a legit, he, I don't know, the guy was like, he basically was giving people a credit card. So it was like, hey, you give me $59, right? And I'll give you a, a credit card worth $300 and I'll report to the credit bureau. So it's a way to help clean up your credit. Right. And then he gives you a catalog that you can buy from. Well, everything in the catalog is is jacked up. You know, it's all like it's this is stuff he's getting from China for fifteen dollars, right? And he's charging you know one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. So everything you can buy is really just it's horrible. Like you buy one thing, and he's not out any money because he took in fifty bucks. Right. It cost him fifteen dollars. Even if you never make a payment, then it doesn't matter. He's not out any money at all. And if you do make the payment, well. That's great because eventually he gets the two hundred dollars back. the The point is, is that was a guy. There was a guy in Coleman who had done that, it was, and it was kind of like a business opportunity thing that he had just kind of set up. Right. The problem was, he said, "You know, I set it up. We started running with it. Started doing well. Started hiring people. People are calling. We're calling. We're getting people in. We're doing. We're doing great numbers." He said, "But then I turned around and he went." to like Equifax and said, how much for me to record these every month? And it was too much. Right. Like he, they wanted, I don't remember the number is, let's say they wanted like, oh, it's like $20 a, a person. He was like, that's insane. Not gonna, and then they said, well, you don't have enough. The, if you have this many people, like a, you have a thousand people, then we drop it from 20 down to this much. If well, $20 you dollars per month. Per okay. month. Then they were like, if you do this many, if you have over 10,000 people, then we drop it down to it's $8. Like you have to have whatever it was. It was an outrageous amount of number for it to get down to where it was almost nothing, right? Where it was cents, which is where <laughs> someone like Bank of America is. Like it cost them almost nothing to report. Right. But he wasn't there, so he figured, okay, that's fine. At the rate we're going, we'll be over the thousand. It'll cost eight dollars or whatever it was. I forget the number. And he said, but you know, but by the time we got to the thousand, like nobody was complaining. You know, he said, like nobody, like even people that called and said, hey, it hasn't shown up yet. We were like, well, yeah, you have to make a few payments before it should. Trust me, we were. Really, <laughs> he's like, like he said, and a lot of people would just stop paying. So it's like they don't say anything at all. Like they don't want it to show up. Right. And he said, so six months, a year went by. Right. Now he's just telling, he's just, just telling people, oh, we're reporting. Where are you pulling from? Where are you? Like they oh, just, just, oh yeah. Then, and I was like, down yeah, but, the uh, downward spiral. Right. But at this point you could pay. He's like, I know, I forget how many millions he ended up making five, six million. I mean, he was just tons and he's dumping money into it. He's like, you know, advertising, paying this, like, but you're making millions. Yes. You're telling me you made, if I had a, a little scheme that I was running that was making me $2 million, and for me to make it legit, I have to spend a million. Money. Yeah. Even if I had just a, a million out of my two. Half. I'll spend the two the million to keep a million. Yes. Yeah, he wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. So within a year or two, it catches up with them. Lavish lifestyle. Just a jerk off. You know, and then he gets arrested. And then, of course, they go in front. He's got hundreds. No, sorry thousands and thousands of victims so what he thought was okay it's a few million dollars i'll do a couple of years ended up being ridiculous it was like six to eight years or something because he had so many victims yeah because you do you remember that the the federal uh sentencing guidelines like if i have zero to ten yeah they changed is, it they changed it now but when i got sentenced yeah well, zero to what i'm saying is than, was it is no it's five it was five wasn't it no, it was more than 10. Right. It well, was, no, it, it was, goes up in increments. Well, yeah, yeah it was 10 and 50. Right. And, and, and then, t then then it goes up again. It goes up like 150, 250, and over 500, something like that. Like, it keeps going. Oh, wow. When I got sentenced, it was more than 10. 
Then it was um, more it was than up, 50. I think it was up to 250, up to 250 or oh, wow. more. They changed it. They changed it for real. I got slammed. Well, so what happened with him was like, let me, let me, let me put it this way. Let's say I stole a million dollars from two people. Like I stole a million from you and a million from you. I don't get an enhancement for that. Like I don't get it. Like, like, I don't get an enhancement for the victims. Cause, but if I stole, you know, $20 from 50 people, I get this massive enhancement. It's like, wait a second. I stole next to nothing from these people. 20 bucks a pop. That's nothing. That's not going to change their life. Right. These guys wiped someone out and they're like, I know, but they have more victims. They're 20, it's twenty dollars. <laughs> like even if it and it's less money, yeah, it's but, less but, money, and yeah, but you have more victims. Yeah, but that's not like their their logic is skewed. But that makes sense to me. If if because chances are the twenty bucks are from poor people, and you wipe out rich people. So I don't if it know, was nine hundred thousand right. dollars from an old retired woman. Yeah, you're right. So then, you know it, it doesn't it doesn't well that's what it doesn't the, balance. They were trying to change that. There was like an amendment that that um, I forget Fam had put up or somebody. They were trying to you know they never do change them, but they were like when I was you know we were getting these letters like hey we're put this is going up they're going to change this and this and this and like none of it passed. The, the problem with the feds is it's none of it's retroactive. Yeah, even if it which, does, it'd be new people. Which which you want to kind of say you know like okay so I already stole that money you know you don't make anything retroactive why why. <laughs> Have to pay those freaking people that already already so so you're like oh well this is wrong we'll change it but we're not gonna let the people who got right. screwed by it we're not right. gonna unscrew right. them so I got caught with a pound of marijuana today and I got a year right this guy got caught with two pounds on Tuesday and he gets nothing right because now it's not illegal yeah but when you did it was illegal yes but it's now not right. I get it. Can we let me? Can we make that retroactive and let me out? No, yeah, absolutely not. No, you're a criminal. <laughs> he didn't get it from a pharmacy either. I know, yeah, but it's, 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 he got it from the same guy I got it from. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, they never made any of those um, victim changes retroactive. But like um, for me, the the Ponzi scheme, I agree. I think it's someone losing control of a, a specific situation. Like all the all the infamous, all the famous ones that I know about. Yeah. It's just kind of like you get off the handle. Do you remember, and I'm going to say this completely wrong, but it's not even going to be probably valid. I probably shouldn't even try it. But there was um, one guy that was offering a, a, a pill with, that was supposed to make your penis larger. Of course. Of course I do. And he goes, hi, meet, yeah, meet of course. Dick. Hey, yeah. yeah. And he yeah. would do that. It was yes. so, yeah, you know, he got, yeah, he got busted. Yes. Because, like, I'm going, what kind of, like, when I saw that, like, I immediately, now I'm in jail. I immediately ran to the law library to look that up because I'm like, what Ponzi scheme could no. he have pulled off? Was it a Ponzi scheme? Yes, it was. No. Be because, oh, it was dishonest. It was a Ponzi scheme. No, it wasn't. It was because you couldn't cancel it. Right. It was just dishonest. That's not a Ponzi scheme. A pon you know what a Ponzi scheme is? It's it's Ponzi scheme is when you're you're giving me money. Where you're taking from new victims to pay old victims off, and it eventually really? collapse. Yeah, are you serious? Oh, I'm serious. You're I'm killing sorry. me. I'm sorry. A Ponzi scheme is where you give me a hundred thousand dollars, and I say you're making twenty percent a year, and you go, okay, but really, I just spent your money on a Lamborghini, you know, and a, and a new house for me. And then when you say, hey, Matt, I need to get a hundred thousand of that back, I say, oh, okay, Connor. Give me a hundred thousand, I'll make you twenty percent a year. And you go, okay, you give it to me, and I give you the hundred thousand, the hundred thousand, so or twenty off. or twenty thousand dollars, whatever your proceeds are. I'm taking from. So anytime you pull it out, pull out, I'm giving you money that I'm taking from Mary Shelley, from Connor, from Jess, from. So other people are paying in, and I'm anybody who says, yeah, "Hey not, man, I'm not using it for what you're supposed to use it for." Right, right. So anytime somebody says, you say, hey, I give you $100,000 and it's been five years, it's now worth 300000 I say, oh, I got it. Here's your 300000 but I just took their money to pay you. And when he asks for his money, I'm taking from Bob and Jim and Bill oh, wow. to pay him. And so what happens is it's okay. It functions okay if more people pay in all the time. That's what Social Security is. Social <laughs> Security is people, it's, it's a legal Ponzi scheme. Yes. Because they're pulling that. from everybody's check to pay out people that had paid in originally. Yes. So, Insolvent. 
But at some but point, the meet Dick and, and Jane. Yes, that well, guy. Yeah, what was it? so? So what you you know? I know this whole scam. Well, you know what it was. Down. The scam, you had that. Oh, go ahead. You, you tell. Okay, it. so here's what he was saying. What they were saying was, well, it's a money back guarantee. Like you pay for it. If it doesn't work, we'll give you your money back. And it didn't work. No, no. Well, of course it doesn't work. <laughs> but his whole thing was when people said, "I want my man. I, I paid five hundred bucks. I want my five hundred dollars back. It's been six months. I've been taking this pill. I'm out of pills, and nothing ever happened. My my Johnson did not get bigger, which you promised. Right. And he said, okay, well, all we need is a letter from your doctor showing that prior to you taking the pills, you were this size, and now you're 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 still the same size, and that the pills did not help you. So just get us a letter from your doctor. If you can prove it, we'll give you the money back. Who the hell? Like, I didn't, if you read the fine print, we have to have proof or that sort of, so, well, I'm sorry, but I didn't go to my doctor and get him to measure my junk. <laughs> Before and after. So they're right. like, well, I'm sorry. Then how do we know it didn't work? Look how small my junk yes, is. Yes, exactly. Like, so you imagine yeah. people are taking Here, pictures. Here's your money back. Look at this. <laughs> Some people are like, does well, this, here's your money back. There's does no this way. look like my wife is smiling the way that <laughs> chick on the commercial? Right. Right. Um, yeah. So as a result of that, they ended up. That, so it, it was it was unfair you know business practices it was it was false advertising it was we, we got to look that up because how would that be even a federal case just uh because he's doing it across state lines he's doing oh, it all yeah. over <sighs> and, you know still in from thousands and thousands of you know little penis men which, <laughs> which need is, to be protected which is embarrassing itself you know I mean? I'm seeing it all lined up in court yeah I still got nothing yeah <laughs> it's upsetting. <laughs> I wish. What is that? that uh, what is the name? What was the name of the of the the scam? Right. My phone's been going off. Um. Scam involving making your penis big with a pill. And smiling Bob loses his fortune and his freedom. And News host John London has more on the male enhancement pill scam in this story. It's new tonight at 5.30. Hi, John. Hi, Cherie. He was blinded by his own arrogance and greed. That is the bottom line tonight from a federal judge who hit Steve Warshak with a 25-year prison sentence and a $500 million is, dollar fine. Is he still in? Smiling Bob him? bumped no, up against the, the face of federal justice today in a case about greed. That's how Judge Arthur Spiegel puts it. He's giving Steve Warshak 30 days to get his affairs in order before heading for 20 plus years of federal prison. This was the perfect storm of consumer and fraud. Turned you had a group of consumers in. that wouldn't want to come forward and say that they'd been ripped off. Warshak started Berkeley Nutraceuticals, which was rated on suspicion of massive fraud. Federal that? investigators say consumers Steve. were ripped off, a hundred million dollars worth of ripping by way of those Enzyme ads that promised greater sexual satisfaction. According to the court, it delivered deception instead. You know Judge Spiegel it? telling Warshak he preyed on the sexual inadequacies and vulnerabilities of consumers so as to keep massive amounts of money generated by fraud. Attorney Jim O'Reilly is using this case as Exhibit A for his new book, Corporate Criminal Sentencing. As we spoke, the viability of the entire company rested on the size of the federal fine upstairs. Managements all the time are making decisions that are bet the company decisions. He happened to bet on consumer fraud. He didn't get away with it. Warshak's 75-year-old mother got a two-year sentence. Other defendants face the music tomorrow. And late today, the Berkeley Corporation was fined $15 million. Those running it have three months to pay it. It is not known tonight if they'll sell or even if they'll be able to continue to operate. This is saying no results. Live in the newsroom, John found. London, News Fund. You, um, I'll tell you when I get home. $100 million fraud. And he did nine years? Nine years. Could you get somebody to do do it for? Could you get somebody to do the time for? Mine was uh, my fraud was a hundred thousand dollars. I know, <laughs> and I got sixteen and a half. And and my judge feels like that just simply wasn't enough. He, he but it that, wasn't, was it? No, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> enough. And on top of that, <laughs> you had an extensive criminal history. Yes. <laughs> my my lawyer. Did you see that look? My yes. lawyer called me a cons a consummate, consummate criminal. Consummate. I had to look that up. Consummate criminal. Yes. When I read that in the transcript, I'm like, what the heck does that consummate mean? Did you go, yeah, stop. stop. It's, it, it means perfect. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I 
I like it. I'll never like forget it. that. I'm reading in the transcript. Mr. Allen is a consummate criminal. Did you say, said, Your Honor, minute, if I was consummate, would we even be having this talk? <laughs> if I was a perfect criminal, we wouldn't even know each other. <sighs> Certainly wouldn't have been in front of you all these times. Oh. <laughs> over and over. Like at this point, what's his first name? My Yeah. Who? My judge? Yeah. Um, James. Like at this point, you basically walk in and go, Jimmy! <laughs> what's going on what have you been up to you know what i've been up to <laughs> no that's why we're here can't stand that no. anyway. <laughs> let's not go there all right so oh my God. do you have any other uh schemes that you admire besides the uh little dick and guy <laughs> <laughs> um you know there's a rapper named little dicky really yes I think there's a rapper or there's a there's a guy he's named he's got a tv show now doesn't he yeah there's a, a Black Zach um, guy, too. Uh, Black Zach. You're, have you ever punched in your thing? Like this, is, this is the first thing that comes up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then this comes up. Then you come up. But the first guy is way better. <laughs> Mix, you two, Black. Have you listened to the song? No. Why, what is it? <laughs> Is he's it gen- one? Is it one song? I mean, he's got eighteen yeah. views. Have you listened to it? Yes, it's horrible. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's Xanadu quality. <laughs> You've already got more more uh, uh, views than him. Yes, subs- yeah. I want to copy him. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Oh, Check out the oh, other black bag, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Oh, it's Look horrible. At- I told you that. Look at the booty on that chick. <laughs> Look. Yeah. See, he's got the glasses. Yeah. I can't dance. Oh. It. 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 Look. <laughs> look. Look at him. Look at him. Come on, put this up. <laughs> get. Get him some views. Get him some subscribers. We the need other some black, subscriber. The other yeah. black Zach. Hold, hold on, Connor. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Then why do you think that's bad? Are you serious? Play that thing. I don't think it's bad at all. Not at all. <laughs> it's as good as any of the rap music I've heard. He's got a whole. He's, he loves it too. He loves what he's doing. Here it comes, it, dude. It's but, hard. I'm, I'm like, what is this? No way. I hope this doesn't get copywritten. No, oh, yeah, he takes it. How how many songs? He only has one song, or does he have multiple songs? No, he's got a look. He's look. So he what? He's got. Oh no! Oh, he's got. Look at. Tell him to check out my channel. <laughs> we should. You should come back to Matt. Like, thank you very much for subscribing. That's how you should close it out. The other Black Zach. Speaking speaking of illegal speaking of schemes, <laughs> what about the other Black Zach, the, the guys whose name I stole? What about listen? <laughs> I I knew a guy in Coleman that was a concert promoter that promoted several concerts, right? And then and people paid whatever, a couple hundred bucks, like I mean, radio stations, everything, and he was promoting concerts for people that weren't. Like these are artists that are like, well, when am I going to be in Michigan? What's going on? Like he'd take them and they'd put the money, they'd send in their money and then they would, the promoter would take the money and then they would come out and say, Hey, it's been postponed, postponed. Like on the tickets, it says like, Hey, if there's, you know, weather and this, and that or postponements, you, you'll under, you understand. And he kept, he would postpone it like 60 days, then another 90, then another 30, then 60. And then they just drop away. They just fade out. Just and they kept your money. Right, kept your money. By that way, your money's way gone. Um, yeah. So he uh but he did a whole thing. It eventually caught up with it. He was in Coleman with us. And when I got out, he listen to this. I always forget about this. This is hilarious. So when I first got to that this is a whole sidebar thing. Mm-hmm. So when I first got to the halfway house, do you remember how how which halfway house did you go to? The one Tampa, on the same yeah. one you did. Okay, so you know, they were strict, right? Like they were like like they're checking you. You come in, you and then they do Not the thoroughly, but yeah, rule wise, yes, rule wise, yes. What I'm saying is, when when 
so for instance, people couldn't just show up and like, for instance, and they, they told you, did you get the little speech when you got there? Yes. Like if you have, don't friends come over, they have to be, you have to tell them they have to sign in. They have to this, like, don't have somebody come meet you in the parking lot. Right. Like that's an issue. Like if they saw you, they'd violate you. Like, Hey, some guy just came by they'd search you like, what's going on? You stood out there and talked to that guy for 20 minutes and you know, that sort of thing, you know, Hey, that, that's a illegal, this, whatever, stand there. We're calling like that. They, they, they'd violate you. You'd go spend 30 days in the County jail. So they, to me, they were strict. Like they had made you clean all the time. If you didn't have a job, you're cleaning all the time. Like it, they made you want to get out of that halfway house as yes, quick as possible. Yes. So, and I was there for seven months. You know, you were there. But you you were, had a job. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying you you were on home. You got an ankle monitor right away. You yes, were out right 30 away. Thirty days, thirty days. Yeah, thirty days. I was there seven months. So were you I, in there whole, whole seven? The months? whole seven months. You never got home confinement. You didn't have a where? Home? I didn't have a home. Oh I can't my stay god. with my mom. You know. Oh my god, so, seven months. Yeah. You and Jess, right? No, Jess got out within sixty ninety days. She was out. Oh okay. But she had her dad's. Oh, okay. Um, and the only reason that took so long was like he had to get like a, a landline. Like he didn't have a landline. There's he's in Mayaka. He's got a cell phone. Who the hell has a landline? Right. Um, so anyway, the point is, is that when I got there, I had been there two weeks. I get there. I'm keeping my head down. I'm just doing what I have to do. I get there, and um, probably within a week. Guys are walking around. One day, I, all of a sudden, within like a day or so, I notice guys are walking around looking at me, looking at me. And then one day, I walk by a guy sitting on the couches. Remember the couches in the middle, in yes. the day room? Guys watching. He's watching my, this is when My American Greed was on Hulu. He's watching it on Hulu as I walk by. And I hear the whole, and I'm like, I look over and he's sitting there watching. And I look, he looks up, he goes, he just smiles. And he was watching. I was like, you know, I was like, oh man. So I then I walk and a counselor, not my counselor, is actually it was Jess's counselor, this black guy. He walks by and looks at me, he goes, Cox, he said, saw you on TV last night. And I went, on on what? And he goes, he said, on American Greed. I was like, oh man, he was like, yeah, yeah, you need to hold your head low. Like he was like, give me a laugh. He was laughing about it. Like they were, but I said, who, who else has seen it? And he goes, oh, we've all seen it by now. We've all, it was everybody, like all the staff member had seen it. So that had just happened. And now the inmates are starting to watch it. Right. And I'm not saying anything. I'm just trying to go to work and back. Right. Like I don't just started my job. So then one day I'm sitting there on the, Sitting outside on the, uh, or not outside, I'm sorry. I'm sitting on one of the couches in the day room, playing on my phone or tr even trying to figure it out. And a guy comes up to me, this guy that I was in Coleman with goes up. He goes, hey, Cox, uh, you got to come outside real quick. There's a guy outside wants to talk to you. And I went, what? He goes, there's a guy outside wants to talk to you. And I went, who? Tell him to come in. He goes, no, he's in a car. He needs to, come, he needs to talk to you. And he goes, you need to come outside. And I went, all right, all right. So I get up. I was like, the fuck's going on? I don't know anybody. Nobody, the only people that know I'm even here is like Treon and I'm working for him. Like who stops? And nobody's stopping by the halfway. Who knows where the halfway house is? Right. I walk outside. Remember how everybody used to stand outside and smoke? Yes. There's like 20. Around the tree. Yeah, exactly. There's like 20 guys standing outside smoking like this, staring. The guy that I told you about, the concert promoter, is in a white Lamborghini with the the top off his girlfriend is driving the car blonde blue eyed I walk out and I, I see him and I walk over and he goes he goes Matt Cox he's come here come here I walk over and I go hey what's going on I barely I kind of recognized him he'd sat through my my real estate class a couple times we'd had lunch a few times like I don't really remember him that much but he remembered me he said, hey, man, I'm, I'm so-and-so. I was in your real estate class. Do you remember me? And I was like, yeah, man, what's going on? Like, I kind of remembered him. I was like, yeah, that was that was like a long time. He goes, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a few years ago. I told you I'd look you up. He said, I looked, in the, looked you up every once in a while. I would look, go on BOP, and I saw that you were going to be in the halfway house. He said, I knew it said Orlando. You were going to be in Orlando. He says, so I checked and sure enough, you were here. I told my girl we had to go by. He said, man, do you need anything? I said, no, man. I said, I can't. I, I'm not even supposed to be talking to you, bro. I said, like, they got videos. Like, you're going to get me violated. He goes, well, how, how can I get you talk to you? And I said, man, 
I said, I work at a gym and I told him the name of the gym and this, and I'm sitting there talking to a guy in a Lamborghini in the halfway house parking lot with all these guys smoking cigarettes. Like what the hell is going on? <laughs> I go, Brad, honestly, I can't. I said, I work at a gym. It's called, you know, cultist 24, uh, cultist 24, seven fitness. So look it up 24, seven fitness. I'll be there tomorrow. And I turn around. He's all right. I got you. I got you. And I walked off, called me like two days later, two, three days later, he called the gym, talked to me, got my phone number, came by the gym. We talked for a while, pulls up in his Lamborghini. Yeah. I was just like, like, this is not, this is my life. I didn't, like, you know what I mean? This is insane. You know, I've met a mo- since, since I went to prison, like I've met four or five guys that have Lamborghinis. Yeah. You know, I've met two. Yeah. It's, it's outrageous. Like I didn't know these people before. Where were these people before? And, and you when were, I had money, you were in a low. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm in a pen and a medium. Yeah, there shouldn't have been no guys with Lamborghinis and pins of medium. That's insane. No, it's none, Those it's are none, it's violent none of them. guys. It's none, of them. it's none of them. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of them you introduced me to, which was uh, the guy you sent me to Miami for, the one with the um, liquid. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pulled up in his Lamborghini. I'm like, what the? F-? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good times. It, <laughs> and uh, the other one is um, who does my um, daughter's hair. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Now, these are all like prison guys. With Larry Aves, yeah. Um, well, no, no, not all of them. Well, you know, prison, prison is the great equalizer. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, 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 because um, you Conrad Black was at at Coleman Low, yeah, and he's a multi billionaire. Yeah. Oh, I've met. A, there've been a few billionaires. Listen, I've I've met like three guys. I want to say I, some. I think I feel like it's three guys. I know for sure it's no, it is. I think it's three guys that worked at that worked at NASA. Three guys that worked at NASA that I met that worked at NASA that were all in there. All of them, pictures. And I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I don't know what if there's a correlation there, but the fact that you meet one person in the real world that worked at NASA is odd. Like, how, does, how often does that happen? Even if you lived in Florida, that's right. odd. To meet three? Whew. Listen, the the the... The military dorm, my buddy Pete said the military dorm, out of the entire military dorm, there's like 30, 32 to 35 guys that don't have charges for pictures. Out of 150 guys, there's what, close to 120 that are there for pictures. I just saw that. I just saw that in the paper the other day about a... uh a raid and and um, with the pictures. What, didn't I show you when I got the the message where it comes through like, "Hi, my name is such and such. I want to talk with you." No, I get that all the time. I get where yeah. it's just a, a random text. It's like, "Hey, hey, John," or "Yeah, hey, Sally," and you're like, "This isn't Sally." Oh, what's your name? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it! I don't know what you're doing. I don't have time for this foolishness. I, I wouldn't even. I don't even respond to those. I'm talking. I get a text message or or a messenger request. I told you about that one time, and like, hi, I'm 16, and I'm blah. I'm like, oh my whoa, god, whoa. <laughs> right? No, I don't get that far. Like, I have gotten. Well, no, because I I'm like, oh, she's pretty. Let me. Yeah. Just, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> smash the <laughs> stand, jump, start jumping on it. Yeah, I just got a random text just now. Probably. <laughs> Coupled with the picture. Hi, yeah. My name is Chuck. No, um, it's it, to me all that. That's in in entrapment. That like yeah. Oh, we, well, we got to put those out. To, to, yeah, get the hell out of here, man. I, I read somebody. I read a case where that happened to somebody. I'm trying to remember what was the circumstance behind I, that. I, I remember a case that there was a first time that like the guy because supposedly in the federal system entrapment is not a defense. Like they don't want, they don't allow you to say I was entrapped. I was entrapped simply because that's what they're doing. Cause that's what they're doing. Like I hate it when you use what they're doing against them. Um, so, so this is a guy that owned a piece of land that was right next to a piece of um, fe- a federal park, right? Like a national park. And the park wanted to buy his land and he, for 20 years or something, he refused to sell it. And suddenly, some new park administrators had come on board and they were talking about expanding the park. And they were like, well, this is the park that we want. And they were trying to like say, we're going to take it. And he was saying, it, you don't have to have it. Like, it, you can't use eminent domain to take my property. It doesn't benefit the public 
enough that you need it. You've already got 400,000 acres of, you know, of land. Like it's just stupid and he wouldn't sell it. And so suddenly he started getting these, these emails from, for a website for pictures and he, he, you know, um, he deleted it and then it came again two days later deleted it then another one came and deleted it then another one came and every day we're talking about every day four or five a day of these emails saying to visit the website very specific saying what it was this went on for 90 days this guy this guy like it was something like close to a thousand times deleted it finally one day he clicked on it he said, "I he said I was I didn't know how to make it stop. I'd hit the note stop to unsubscribe. I this and they showed they proved it. He'd done all this. One day he finally clicked on it. He clicked on it, and it's it's something basically. He said I flipped through some pictures. To, you know, he said very quickly, maybe five or ten pictures. He said got off the website, clicked the unsubscribe, and deleted it." thinking maybe that will work. Like it was kind of, it was something along those lines. Right, he's trying to finalize it, like get rid of this. There, there was like a 60 minutes about this. The only reason I know it, it was like a 60 six, minutes, 60 minutes or 20, 20, one of those. And so, and, and I could be botching the story slightly, but what ended up happening was he gets arrested like three days later. They indict him and, and are, come and arrest him. And during the negotiations, they're telling him like, hey, look, like you to plead guilty, um, you know, like they're trying to get his property. They're trying to use seizure to take his property. He's saying, what are you talking about? Like, seize what? What do you, my, that has nothing to do with this. And I don't even know, know what happened here. Like I was trying to get rid of these things. So he goes to trial. Even those lawyers saying you're done, you're done. People have no, they're not going to look past the fact that you clicked on the, on it. He goes to trial and he wins, which was insane. Because he did click on it and he did look at the images. And that's all the law says. But right. it was enough that his lawyer had put together enough of a defense to say it's outrageous how many times they, they hammered him and bombarded him with this. And so he was able to win an entrapment style claim. Right. And he ended up winning. But it was a, it was, they, and they showed also that th- they were, that the FBI was targeting him very specifically. Like, yeah, they were, they were trying to get him. <sighs> hemmed up so that they could get a hold of his land somehow, get some leverage. Now they were never able to get a specific person or anything, but it was pretty clear and that he ended up winning it. Good. Right. But you know, like you said, like, but that's he didn't end up going to prison anyway. Right. But that almost never happens. So I'm saying like the idea that he could win that defense, it almost never happens. Never. So that's a, 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 an example that, I, I tell you another time, a guy was buying, a guy got, uh, I knew a guy that, and this was pretty well documented too. This is like totally off the subject. Um, but anybody watching this, that's watching this far would probably be interested. Um, <laughs> the point is, is that this guy had, he was buying credit card information and the right. guy said, Hey, what about getting some pictures? I think we all know what kind of pictures we're talking about. And the guy said, Hey man, I sell I sell pictures, I sell videos, I have pictures of this. And he was like, oh, bro, I'm not interested in that. I'm trying to get, you know, you advertised on this website that you had credit card right. information. Like that's who he thought he was contacting. Right. And it somehow or another, he it wasn't that. Like they, they were like, well, we don't have that. He ended up getting an FBI agent that was getting this up doing the, you know, in tra- or grab trying to get people to be interested in this other thing. So... He ends up saying, no, 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 no. And finally the guy says, I have bootleg videos of new movies and I have cre- the credit card information you want. So he says, okay. Hit him with a double. Well, so he says, well, the bootleg videos were just like bootleg videos from movies. So he dropped the other thing. And then they sent, he bought it. They sent it to him. He gets it. In the information, they had put J- they had put like JPEGs of photographs of young people. They indict him, arrest him. They come and arrest him. Grab his computer. He's got the images on there. They showed that he did look at them for a few seconds apiece. But in his mind, he said, "Did I look at them? Yes." He said. I didn't know what they were because I told him over and over again I wasn't interested in that. 
He did take a plea, by the way. He ended up taking a plea because he said, I was so, my lawyer was like, you're so screwed because the law says if you simply have possession, you're already guilty. He's, he, they go, and you did have possession, and you did look at the pictures, and you looked at them too long. Like if you look at them for more than like four seconds or something or six seconds, there's a length of time for you to look at it, realize what you're looking at is wrong, and delete it. He looked at it for longer. And then, and he didn't delete them. They were like, so it's still on your computer. You didn't try and delete them. You're guilty. So he just took a plea. He got like, I don't know what it was, five years, six years, whatever it was, for just a few yeah, look, see, see, like, and people say, like, well, what are you guys? You get so freaked out if somebody's trying to send you a message, or <laughs> hell, you talk to Bozak. Bozak's like, he's like anybody that tries to contact me that I think is even remotely too young, I delete. It's like, boom, no, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. And, and, and they sneak up on you. I, I have a um, a buddy, my old celly, that uh, on his Facebook page, he, he sent me a couple of them. I'm like, what? What is this? Oh, this is my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, don't send me any more. <laughs> yeah, anybody that looks yes. even remotely. Yes. And the, what's so funny, too, is like you could be 25 years old and, and send me a picture. 25-year-olds, to me, look like they're 12. <laughs> you know, like every, the older you get, the younger everybody else looks. So if some girl said, oh, I'm 25, I'd be like, I this chick looks like she's 12 years old. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Crazy. So yeah, I, I could imagine being because I heard these horror stories, horror stories. Well, you are, like I wasn't around them too. The ones I was around were um, probably success. They weren't just picture watchers. No, they no, were they're they're creators. They're, yeah. they were uh, diddlers. Too. We had the we had the hands, diddlers on the roof. Yeah, hands on and hands off. Yeah, <laughs> you know that dude you were talking to. Yeah, you know he's hands on, right? Oh man, are you serious? No, nah, no, no hands on would be there at all. Oh, at your place. At your place. No, at the low? At the low. Yeah, they were there. The hands-on? Yeah. Yeah, these are guys that like put, brought somebody across state lines. I, I, I told you. Didn't I ever tell but you they, about But it couldn't have been a, a full rape. No, this is a, a low. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I don't know about the full. This is somebody who made the attempt or was actually showed up someplace. Right. Uh, the ones that I saw were absolutely hands-on. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I don't, well, listen. There was a guy in Germany who flew from Germany to the United States, thinking he was meeting like a 14-year-old boy or something. Flew all the way there. And it's legal in Germany, by the way. Like the age of consent was like 14. The boy was 14. He flies all the way over here, gets arrested, and says, hey, I haven't done anything wrong. I was in my country. They said, you flew to the United States. He then goes to the German uh, consulate and tries to get help. They wouldn't lift a finger for him. He's like, well, it's not illegal in Germany, like I and I didn't do it. And the other thing is in Germany, like you didn't do anything to him. It's like I just showed up. I didn't do it. That. In Germany, you would have have to have done something. They were like, nope, twenty five years. America, America, when, when when America tells them like like we're take we're keeping this one, you're, you're yeah. They're it, just, the consulate's kind of like, oh well, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't. I, anyway, yeah. I mean, not that he's not a weirdo, but is he a weirdo? I mean, you know, you get to a point where it's like everybody's a weirdo. I, I everybody I met was just like odd, you know. It's like everybody you just meet people. You just, I, you know, it, it was it's so. I hate to say that I, I would, you know, started to try and figure out what people's charges were. Like I, you know, and, and they would lie. You know, they always use fraud. <laughs> they always say, "What we here for fraud?" Man, you mother. Why can't you say something you could pull off? And because you know, very quickly, it's like, oh, what kind of fraud? Um. Credit card fraud. You were charged with credit card fraud. Yes, charge was charged with. The, they actually said credit card fraud. Yeah, it was credit card fraud. <laughs> well, there's no char federal charge for, for credit, credit card, card fraud. fraud. So it had to be access device fraud. It had to be like, like if you're gonna lie about my field of expertise, <laughs> learn some, something. Some research. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like can't, you can't say like you know fraud. cannabis. I was receiving ca cannabis in the mail. Say that. You don't have to know anything. Well, you know, I will give them credit. Like, if they're at the low and they're saying fraud, that's actually um, security level appropriate. Because most of the time, drugs are medium and up. Right. So there were some, some guys that, well, guys would work their way down from the medium. Right. For, to the low. But yeah, I'm here for drugs. They, they probably feel like they get called out for drugs too fast anyway. Yeah, well, I don't think they, it, it, listen, it doesn't matter. You talk to these guys for, for 10 minutes, and anyways, after 10 minutes, you're just like, no, man. I don't I mean even if you talk the talk like I'm sorry bro. 
you're, you're I don't a, believe you. You're not a drug addict. You're not here for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I got all the lingo. Down. Stop it. <laughs> I've been watching them. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> offer. You can start. You, bro, I'm, it's all I think about. <laughs> the ones that you envy? Is that what that's? Oh, listen, I hear scam. Are we recording? Yes. Okay. okay. So I hear scams all the time where I see it. I read a little article or somebody tells me about their scam or I'll see a, um, I'll see something on the news and it's just like, oh, man, like if they just did, if they didn't. They, the <laughs> problem with most people is you read this scam and you're like, that's a good scam. Like what went wrong? Like he did it in his own name yes, or he did it in yes. his sister's name or his, one of his buddies, like, what are you doing? And, or, and then it breaks down where you're like, why didn't they just open a bank account in somebody else's name or in a fake person's name or in a, you know, a homeless person or whatever's name and dump the money in there and remove it. And you're like, well, and then I, I always have to remind myself like, bro, not everybody, and this is going to sound arrogant, has your skill set. Like not everybody can figure out how to get a driver's license in somebody else's name or right. an ID or whatever. Not everybody's multifaceted right. where they like, they just have a scam and they like a pit bull and they lock on it. Right. They, they're like, I could probably make, uh, I could probably make 10,000, $20,000 on this. Not realizing, okay, you could make 20 grand, yes. but three months from now you're in front of a judge or you're just getting handcuffed and you're waiting to be in front of a judge. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do six months or a year and now you're on your probation and then you start looking back on it and you go, Jesus, God almighty <laughs> for 30 grand or 20 grand. I just put a year in jail. I, I spent a year in jail. <laughs> right. I lost all my shit. People, people never realize like going to jail. Who gives a shit? I don't give a shit. I'll go to jail for fucking six months. If I can come back where I left off, the right. problem is you're coming back. You've lost everything. everything. <laughs> and what's even worse is, is that the people you know are the ones that took it. Yes. Like, <laughs> like nobody came in and boxed up my shit and stuck it in a storage no, unit. No, even in their it's, garage. It, it's pilfered. You get you get absolutely robbed. Everyone's <laughs> taking everything. You see so. somebody two years later and you're like, hey, Jimmy, what? It, is that my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, is Maybe. It, is I it? got it from Goodwill. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's start this. All right. Okay. What are we doing? Do I start? You're good. Okay. <laughs> um, what else? That's it. End this. All right. Well, what's up? Is that it? Are we done? Yeah, we got the video. You got the Black Zach video. Oh, I love the Black Zach video. <laughs> you should contact Black Zach. I, say, I will. Can I use, like, we could do theme music. We could cut that up into. Throw that thing. <laughs> Hey, this is Matt Cox, and did you change it to? Yep, right. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm here with Zach, and I appreciate Zach coming on. I don't think he even switches it when you do that. I think that not. he do you? Yeah. I think he just I, I I think he just like they might see a little hand <laughs> flopping in my there. Yeah. So so uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Do me a favor if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like that. Share the video. Please hit the thumbs up and leave me a comment. I try and respond to most comments. Uh, I, I think I do, do respond I to, to a ton. That. I need to do that. Yeah, that's horrible. I do. Uh, and check out Zach's uh, channel. And um, if you want to donate money to his cash app, by all means, you can donate money to his cash app. It's, and uh, what is it? You're not going to tell me what it is? Um, my cash app? Yeah, Black Zach 50 Black Zach 50 and we'll leave the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. And hey, by the way, I wrote a bunch of true crime books. Check out the uh, check out the the trailers. See ya. Using forgeries and bogus identities, Matthew B. Cox, one of the most ingenious con men in history, built America's biggest banks out of millions. Despite numerous encounters with bank security, state, and federal authorities. Cox narrowly, and quite luckily, avoided capture for years. Eventually, he topped the U.S. Secret Service's most wanted list and led the U.S. Marshals, FBI, and Secret Service on a three-year chase while jet-setting around the world with his attractive female accomplices. Cox has been declared one of the most prolific mortgage fraud con artists of all time by CNBC's American Greed. Bloomberg Businessweek called him the mortgage industry's worst nightmare, while Dateline NBC described Cox as a gifted forger and silver-tongued liar. 
Playboy magazine proclaimed his scam was real estate fraud, and he was the best. Shark in the Housing Pool is Cox's exhilarating first-person account of his stranger-than-fiction story. Available now on Amazon and Audible. Bent is the story of John J. Boziak's phenomenal life of crime. Inked from head to toe, with an addiction to strippers and fast Cadillacs, Boziak was not your typical computer geek. He was, however, one of the most cunning scammers, counterfeiters, identity thieves, and escape artists alive, and a major thorn in the side of the U.S. Secret Service as they fought a war on cybercrime. With a savant-like ability to circumvent banking security and stay one step ahead of law enforcement, Boziak made millions of dollars in the international cyber underworld with the help of the Chinese and the Russians. Then, leaving nothing but a John Doe warrant and a cleaned-out bank account in his wake, he vanished. Boziak's stranger-than-fiction tale of ingenious scams and impossible escapes, of brazen run-ins with the law and secret desires to straighten out and settle down, makes his story a true crime con game that will keep you guessing. Bent. How a homeless teen became one of the cybercrime industry's most prolific counterfeiters. Available now on Amazon and Audible. Buried by the U.S. government and ignored by the national media, this is the story they don't want you to know. When Frank Amadeo met with President George W. Bush at the White House to discuss NATO operations in Afghanistan, no one knew that he'd already embezzled nearly $200 million from the federal government, money he intended to use to bankroll his plan to take over the world. From Amadeo's global headquarters in the shadow of Florida's Disney World, with a nearly inexhaustible supply of the Internal Revenue Services funds, Amadeo acquired multiple businesses, amassing a mega conglomerate. Driven by his delusions of world conquest, he negotiated the purchase of a squadron of American fighter jets and the controlling interest in a former Soviet ICBM factory. He began work to build the largest private militia on the planet, over one million Africans strong. Simultaneously, Amadeo hired an international black ops force to orchestrate a coup in the Congo while plotting to take over several small Eastern European countries. The most disturbing part of it all is, had the U.S. government not thwarted his plans, he might have just pulled it off. It's insanity. The bizarre, true story of a bipolar megalomaniac's insane plan for total world domination. Available now on Amazon and Audible. Pierre Rossini, in the 1990s, was a 20-something-year-old Los Angeles-based drug trafficker of ecstasy and ice. He and his associates drove luxury European supercars, lived in Beverly Hills penthouses, and dated Playboy models while dodging federal indictments. Then, two FBI officers with the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force entered the picture. Dirty agents willing to fix cases and identify informants. Suddenly, two of Rossini's associates, confidential informants working with federal law enforcement, were murdered. Everyone pointed to Rossini. As his co-defendants prepared for trial, U.S. Attorney Robert Mueller sat down to debrief Rossini at Leavenworth Penitentiary, and another story emerged. A tale of FBI corruption and complicity in murder. You see, Pierre Rossini knew something that no one else knew. The truth. And Robert Mueller and the federal government have been covering it up to this very day. Devil Exposed. A twisted tale of drug trafficking, corruption, and murder in the City of Angels. Available on Amazon and Audible. Bailout is a psychological true crime thriller that pits a narcissistic con man against an egotistical pathological liar. Marcus Shrinker, the money manager who attempted to fake his own death during the 2008 financial crisis, is about to be released from prison and he's ready to talk. He's ready to tell you the story no one's heard. Shrinker sits down with true crime writer Matthew B. Cox, a fellow inmate serving time for bank fraud. Shrinker lays out the details. The disgruntled clients who persecuted him for unanticipated market losses, the affair that ruined his marriage, and the treachery of his scorned wife, the woman who framed him for securities fraud, leaving him no choice but to make a bogus distress call and plunge from his multi-million dollar private aircraft in the dead of night. 
the $11.1 million in life insurance, the missing $1.5 million in gold. The fact is, Shrinker wants you to think he's innocent. The problem is, Cox knows Shrinker's a pathological liar and his story's a fabrication. As Cox subtly coaxes, cajoles, and yes, cons Shrinker into revealing his deceptions, his stranger-than-fiction life of lies slowly unravels. This is the story Shrinker didn't want you to know. Bailout, The Life and Lies of Marcus Shrinker. Available now on Barnes & Noble, Etsy, and Audible. Matthew B. Cox is a con man, incarcerated in the Federal Bureau of Prisons for a variety of bank fraud-related scams. Despite not having a drug problem, Cox inexplicably ends up in the prison's residential drug abuse program, known as RDAP, a drug program in name only. RDAP is an invasive behavior modification therapy specifically designed to correct the cognitive thinking errors associated with criminal behavior. The program is a non-fiction dark comedy which chronicles Cox's side-splitting journey. This first-person account is a fascinating glimpse at the survivor-like atmosphere inside of the government-sponsored rehabilitation unit. While navigating the treachery of his backstabbing peers, Cox simultaneously manipulates prison policies and the bumbling staff every step of the way. The Program How a Con Man Survived the Federal Bureau of Prisons' Cult of RDAP Available now on Amazon and Audible. If you saw anything you like, links to all the books are in the description box.